Hello everyone and welcome to the final match and the final game of the Fisher Random World Championship 2022. It is Hikaru Nakamura versus Yanni Pomnishi and this is the Armageddon game, uh, which means that whoever plays the white pieces must win. Otherwise, uh, uh, if it's a draw or black wins, then black wins the title. First four games uh, were very hard fought. Hikaru started by winning game one, then game two ended in a draw. Then Yan uh, uh, retaliated in game three and the game four also ended in a draw. Uh, they didn't want to probably decide it uh you know uh, it's for the game everything is, is tense uh, they don't want to uh you know it, it's like ba basically it's like throwing a dice uh, but then again the alternative is armageddon which is okay you, you get the white pieces you have to win it's it's up to you so hikaru gets white in armageddon and now let's see the game this is the position and it's the weird one that everyone hates uh, the uh <laughs> Uh, king uh, in, in between the two towers it's like the uh, I haven't really watched Lord of the Rings a, a, a while ago but it's uh, the, there is something with the two towers in there uh, but and there's also something with the king like one of the titles is with the king but so I thought that was funny uh, but okay uh, uh, let's see the game Hikaru has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to b3 and here even though the uh, openings don't really have names here we will have a super symmetrical variation pawn to b3 we have pawn to b6 both of them uh develop their bishops or rather uh open up their bishops we have e4 e5 and now pawn to g3 we have pawn to g6 hikaru plays f4 and now pawn to f5 and now f captures an e4 uh, on e5 uh, bishop captures on e5 now uh, attacking the bishop on uh, on a1 but now e captures on f1 look at this opening up this diagonal as well and now the bishop on h1 is hanging but also the bishop on e5 is hanging so how do you play this uh, bishop captures on a1 and now bishop captures on e5 we have g captures on f5 and now bishop the back to c3 offering a trade of queens bishop back to c6 and now knight to e3 we have queen to h5 going after the h2 pawn and uh, queen to f2 hikaru just nicely defends it we have knight to h6 by yan and now we have knight to e2 preparing knight to e, uh, f4 to go after the queen knight to e6 now taking care of the f4 square and now rook to f1 putting pressure on the f5 pawn uh, but not really uh, just king to b7 by hikaru artificially castling and um, if you capture just rook f8 and uh, uh, sorry king to b7 uh, and now if you capture on f5 uh, then just rook to f8 and you can resign there's um, no way to, uh, to grab the pawn so just pawn to d4 by hikaru and now knight to g4 attacking the queen uh, and the knight and uh, basically asking hikaru do you want to capture on g4 or do you want to move the queen but hikaru plays something very interesting he plays queen to f5 and he completely uh, blunders the game away uh, luckily uh, yan does not spot it and it's not very easy to spot uh, point is you have to play uh, a move that is queen to h6 and it seems like uh, okay what's so hard to spot about this we're just attacking the knight twice obviously we win the game because we win the piece well it's not as clear because you have to see a move uh, uh, ahead and I guess uh, Hikaru just trusted Jan because you have to see that after bishop d2 and the knight captures on e3 there's this very nice queen to d3 move now preparing to win back the piece and now you have to find or, or sorry rather not queen to e4 queen to d3 uh, preparing to win back the piece and now of course this very nice queen to h3 and the rook on f1 is unguarded that's the the, the problem and the, this is what you have to see and now okay if, if you capture the knight then um, a young captures the rook and if you save the rook let's say you play rook e1 then just knight back to d5 you're up a piece and of course completely winning uh, so here we have a, a case of maybe I wouldn't call it double blindness maybe just um, a Hikaru trusting Jan a bit too much so here uh, uh, or rather Jan trusting Hikaru too much so here queen captures on f5 he just trades queens knight captures on f5 and now knight captures on h2 attacking the rook here rook to e1 and now rook to f8 putting pressure on the f5 knight so knight back to e3 and now bishop to e4 uh, an excellent diagonal for this light square bishop we have pawn to d5 and now knight to g5 we have knight to f4 and now rook b 
uh, to e8, developing both of the rooks, and now king to b2. Uh, Nakamura also artificially castles. We have bishop to f3, uh, and now we have pawn to d6. A very resourceful move by uh, Hikaru. Uh, either uh, saying, okay, uh, uh, you, you can destroy your pawn structure, uh, but if you play something like c captures on d6, then there's this very tricky knight to f5. And what is really happening here? Seems like you're giving up a knight, but then the rook hangs. But if you play rook captures on e1 first, uh, then knight captures on d6 comes with check. And after king to c6, look at this, rook captures on e1. And now you might think, okay, but there's king captures on d6. Nope, just bishop to b4 check, and then the rook on f8 uh, hangs as well. Uh, so it's not um, uh, that, that clear how to play this. It's a very nice find by Hikaru, this pawn to d6 move. So Jan just blocks it, pawn to c6. Maybe pawn to c5 was better in some lines as it does free up the c6 square for the light square bishop, but I mean, who's the uh, who's the um, uh, predicted this in an Armageddon game? So here, knight to c4, uh, grabbing some very important squares. Knight to e4, uh, now putting pressure on the bishop here, and also if the knight moves, maybe you can get rid of this pawn. And now knight to e5. Look at this um, uh, wonderful, wonderful move. What is the idea behind this? Well, if knight captures on uh, uh, on d6, you're gonna capture on d7. And now you've pretty much ruined black's um, uh, black spawn structure here. The the rook here is hanging, so you have to trade something. Like rook captures, rook captures, and the game continues. Uh, the material is equal. White maybe a little bit better, but again, very hard to say. In the actual game, after knight to e5, knight captures on c. C3 was played, and now king captures on C3 and bishop to G4. Uh, defending the pawn here on d7, we have rook to e3 and now pawn to h5. The bishop now nicely defended, maybe the knight can get back into the game. Rook b to e1, and with this rook b to e1 move, uh, Hikaru basically leaves Jan uh, without a move. Uh, it's it's incredibly difficult to find a good move here. To give you an example, if you play a weird move, let's say you play pawn to f5, then just knight captures on g4 and you can resign here. You just lost a piece, uh, the rook on d8 is hanging, on e8 and if you trade then just knight uh, recapture so whatever you, you're, you're down a piece so that's the the threat behind this very nice rook bt1 move uh, and if you play something like bishop to f5 which is the only reasonable idea as you don't want to allow knight captures on g4 then you allow the h5 pawn to be captured and okay then you can maybe go after this pawn then we can see something like knight to g7 rook captures on d6 and now rook 3 to e2 uh, but then the, this knight now uh, is, is is trapped. There's no good way to, to save it. You can't really go here. The knight covers this. If you go to g4, then just knight captures bishop, uh, and then you, you pick up the knight. So uh, white will always be uh, much better here. So instead, after rook b to e1, uh, Jan uh, does pretty much the only thing left, and that is rook captures on e5. And the engine agrees with Jan. This is the absolute top move recommended by the engine. Uh, rook captures on e5 and now knight to f3 seemingly winning back the material but not really rook to e8 by hikaru now saying okay you capture on e1 i'm gonna capture on f8 so rook to f6 now goes after the d6 pawn and now rook to h1 so Jan will not be winning back his exchange rook captures on d6 and now uh, you can't capture right away. If you capture right away, then rook h6, and again, uh, you, you have problems here. So instead, after rook captures on d6, rook to g8 by... Uh, Hikaru and now rook to d2. Jan abandons the defense of the of the h5 pawn. There's really no good way to do it. Uh, and he goes after the c2 pawn. He wants to play bishop f5 and go after it. So here uh, we have knight captures on h5 and now bishop to f5 going after the c2 pawn. And it seems like uh, Jan is about to strike back but just rook to c1 by Hikaru and there's no good way to threaten uh, that pawn. It seems like you could play something like let's say knight to e1 but of course uh, then uh, you you leave um, uh, the, the rook undefended and also it's a, it's a weird move to play. So here rook to h2 going after the knight and now knight back to g7 going after the bishop, bishop to e4 now. Uh, and now comes a move that is not easy to spot uh, because it's one of those moves that uh, uh, you never think of, but Hikaru spots it, and that is knight to e8. Point is that, uh, uh, let's say you play something like g4, you want to start pushing your pawn, then c5 is played, something that uh, we've mentioned when c6 was played, and now once this bishop comes to um, uh, c6, it's not going to be easy. For example, now you play knight to e8, bishop to c6, and everything is fine. 
uh, you, you you might be even able to hold this position. But after bishop to e4, uh, Hikaru finds the immediate knight to e8, and now the threat of knight to d6 fork, uh, forking the king and the bishop here is a great one. So here, rook to h6, uh, you prevent the knight from coming to d6, but now rook to f8. We have pawn to d5, uh, but now rook to f6, offering a rook trade, and he wants to go into... Uh, even more trades. We have rook back to h3, and now knight to d6 with check. King to c7, and now knight captures on e4. D captures, and rook to g6, now defending his past g pawn. And yes, uh, both players have four pawns, but Hikaru is still up the exchange. Rook to h2, and now we have rook to e6. Again, uh, going after the e4 pawn, we have rook to e2, defending the pawn, and now rook to h1. We have pawn to b5, you have to create some breeding room for the king otherwise you might just get checkmated uh, so pawn to a3 and now rook to e3 with check and now king to b2 this is an absolute must if you go up the board sometimes you see players do this um, uh, you know it, it looks like a very active idea maybe you can play something like this but then just uh, something like king to b6 and it's actually your king uh, that got uh, that might get checkmated something like knight to d4 capture c2 checkmate and you know stuff like that so after rook to e3 check of course, Hikaru goes to safety, king to b2, and now we have knight to d4. Uh, preparing to put pressure on that c2 pawn, but just rook to h7 check, king to b6, and now rook e to e7. And now with, with some ideas of maybe b4 and rook to b7 checkmate. So here, king to c5 right away, and now rook to d7. Hikaru sets, um, uh, sets up a, a, a deadly maneuver. Knight to f3 by Jan, and now it's actually a forced checkmate in 5 by Hikaru. So feel free to pause the video and win the entire official random world championship for Hikaru while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding any move in the position because any move is really a winning one. But for those of you who actually found the mate in five like Hikaru did, uh, then congratulations. You are also a true master of puzzle rush. Uh, 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 so here we go. Uh, and that, of course, is pawn to b for check. Uh, now, I know you guys think I only chose this as a pause the video moment because it's pawn to b for check. But no, it's really, I mean, it's just that it's always the winning move, even if even in Fisher random, like like it's not it's not like it's a ma it's something that only uh, relates to normal chess you can see that even in fish random b4 is just um, uh, overpowering uh, so here king to c4 was played and now uh, we have rook to h5 the other move you had to find and after rook to h5 it was in this position on move 48 that uh, Jan Nipomnishi resigned the game and Hikaru, Nakam uh, Hikaru Nakamura becomes the world official random champion so big big congratulations to Hikaru uh, uh, he crushed everyone. Uh, it was uh, quite uh, quite an event for him. He just completely obliterated Abdusatarov uh, in the semifinals, like 3-0, not, not even allowing game four to happen. Uh, and then uh, playing very nicely against Jan here in the finals. He started off with a win, but then Jan uh, came back and then he had to go into Armageddon. And uh, yeah, okay, if, if you go up the board, King B6, I forgot to mention, this is also checkmate. It's a very, very straightforward one. Just rook to B7 checkmate now. And uh, after uh, B4 check, King to C4 and rook to H5, the move that Hikaru found, there is no stopping rook to C5 checkmate. You're, you're going to have to give up uh, a, a few pieces for, for no good reason. And that's that's just it. I mean, uh, uh, you could you could play silly moves to make the game go on a little bit longer, but basically Rook to C5 will be checkmate. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I've been pretty uh, pretty busy today. I've only uh, returned home. So if you have any of the uh, games that you think are, are worth showing or uh, some of them are your own favorites from as uh, other games have been played today, uh, aside from the uh, Hikaru Yan matchup. So do use hashtag suggestion and I will go over them. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Once again, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Nathan Helsey, Jack Obid, More Chess 960, Goncalo Morovo and Martin Georg Paparik for your contribution to my channel. Channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.